Hello, my friends. It's your fairy tale fairy. And today I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite story from when I was just about your age. It's the story of Snow White and Rose Red. So find a comfortable chair, pull up a spot on the floor, settle in, and let's learn about Snow White and Rose Red. There once was a poor widow who lived in a lonely cottage. In front of the cottage was a garden where stood two rose trees, one of which grew white and the other red roses. She had two children who were like the two trees and one was called Snow White and the other Rose Red. They were good and happy and busy and cheerful as ever two children in the world were. Only Snow White was more quiet and gentle than Rose Red. Rose Red liked better to run about the meadows and fields seeking flowers and catching butterflies. But Snow White sat at home with her mother and helped her to do the housework or to read to her when there was nothing to do. These two children were, were so fond of one another that they always held each other by the hand when they went out together. And Snow White said, we will never leave each other. And Rose Red would answer, never, so long as we live. And their mother would always add, what one has, she must share with the other. They would often run about the forest alone and gather red berries, and no beasts would do them any harm, but they'd come close to them trustfully. The little hare would eat the cabbage leaf out of their hands, and the doe grazed by their side. The stag leapt merrily by them, and the birds sat still upon the boughs and sang whatever they knew. No mishap overtook them, and if they ever stayed too late in the forest, and night came upon them, they laid near one, one another upon the moss and slept until morning. Their mother knew this and did not worry about them. Once when they had spent the night in the wood and the dawn had awoken them, they saw a beautiful child in a shining white dress sitting near their bed. He got up and looked quite kindly at them, but said nothing, and went into the forest. And when they looked round, they found that they had been sleeping quite close to a cliff, and they would certainly have fallen into it in the darkness if they had only gone a few feet farther. And their mother told them that it must have been an angel who watches over good children. Snow White and Rose Red kept their mother's little cottage so neat that it was a pleasure to look inside it. And in the summer, Rose Red took care of the house and every morning laid a wreath of flowers by their mother's bed before she awoke, and which was a rose from each tree. In the winter, Snow White lit the fire and hung the kettle on the hob. The kettle was of brass and it shone like gold, so brightly was it polished. In the evening when the snowflakes fell, the mother said, go Snow White and bolt the door. And then they sat around the fireplace and the mother took her glasses and read aloud out of a large book and the girls listened and they sat and spun. Close by them lay a lamb on the floor, and behind them on a perch sat a white dove with its head buried beneath its wings. One evening they were sitting comfortably, and someone knocked at the door as if he wished to be let in. The mother said, Quick, Rose Red, open the door. It must be a traveler who is seeking shelter. So Rose Red went and pushed back the bolt thinking that it was a poor man, but it was not. It was a bear that stretched his broad black head into the door. Rose Red screamed and sprang back and the lamb bleated and the dove fluttered and Snow White hid herself behind her mother's bed. But the bear began to speak and said, do not be afraid. I will do you no harm. I am half frozen and only want to warm myself a little beside you. Poor bear, said the mother, lie down by the fire and take care that you do not burn your coat. Then she cried, Snow White, Rose Red, come out. The bear will do you no harm, he means well. So they both came out and by and by the lamb and the dove came nearer and were not afraid of him. And the bear said, here, children, knock the snow out of my coat a little. So they brought a broom and they swept the bear's hide clean. And he stretched himself by the fire 
and he growled contentedly and comfortably. And it was not long before they grew quite comfortable with him and played tricks with their clumsy guest. They tugged his fur with their hands and they put their feet upon his back and rolled him about. Or they took a hazel branch and beat him. And when he growled, they laughed. But the bear took it all in good part. Only when they were too rough, he called out, leave me alive, children. Snow White, Rose Red, will you beat your wooer on the head? When it was bedtime, the others went to bed and the mother said to the bear, you can lay here by the hearth and then you'll be safe from the cold and the bad weather. As soon as day dawned, the children let him out and he trotted across the snow into the forest. The bear came every evening at the same time and laid himself down by the fire and let the children amuse themselves with him as much as they liked. And they got so used to him that the doors were never fastened until their furry friend arrived. When the spring had come and all outside was green, the bear said one morning to Snow White, now I must go away and cannot come back for the whole summer. Where are you going then, dear bear? said Snow White. I must go into the forest and guard my treasures from the wicked dwarves. In the winter, when the earth is frozen hard, they are obliged to stay below and cannot work their way through. But now, when the sun has thawed and warmed the earth, they break through it and come out to pry and steal. And what once gets in their hands and in their caves does not easily see the light of day. Snow White was quite sorry at his departure and she unbolted the door for him and the bear was hurrying out and as this happened, he caught against the bolt and a piece of his hairy coat was torn off. And it seemed to Snow White that as if she'd seen gold shining through it, but she was not so sure. The bear ran away quickly and was soon out of sight behind the trees. A short time afterwards, the mother sent her children into the forest to get firewood. There, they found a big tree which lay on the ground. And close by the trunk, something was jumping backwards and forwards in the grass, but they could not make out what it was. When they came nearer, they saw a dwarf, an old dwarf with an old withered face and a snow white beard a yard long. The end of the beard was caught in a crevice of the tree and the little fellow was jumping about like a dog tied to a rope and did not know what to do. He glared at the girls and his fiery red eyes and he cried, why do you stand there? Can you not help me? Help me. What are you up to little man? asked Rose Red. You stupid crying goose, answered the dwarf. I was going to split the tree and get a little wood for cooking. A little bit of food that we people get is immediately burned up with heavy logs. We do not swallow so much as you greedy folk. I had just driven the wedge safely in and everything was going as I wished, but the cursed wedge was too smooth and suddenly sprang out and the tree closed so quickly, I could not pull out my beautiful white beard. So now it is tight and I can't get away. You silly sleek milk faced things, how odious you are. So the children tried very hard, but they could not pull the beard out. It was caught too fast. I will run and fetch someone, said Rose Red. You senseless goose, snarled the dwarf. Why should you fetch someone? You are too, too many for me. Can you not think of something better? Don't be impatient, said Snow White. I will help you. And she pulled her scissors out of her pocket and cut the end of the beard. As soon as the dwarf felt himself free, he laid a hold of a bag which was amongst the roots and which was full of gold. He lifted it up, grumbling to himself, rude people to cut a piece of my fine beard, bad luck on you. And he swung the bag upon his back and he went off without looking once at the children. Some time afterwards, Snow White and Rose Red went to catch a dish of fish. And as they came near the brook, they saw something like a large grasshopper jumping towards the water as if it were going to leap in. They ran to it and found it was the dwarf. Where are you going? said Rose Red. 
You surely don't want to go into the water. I'm not such a fool, cried the dwarf. Don't you see that the accursed fish wants to pull me in? The little man had been sitting there fishing, and unluckily, the wind had tangled up his beard with the fishing line. And a moment later, a big fish made a bite, and the feeble creature had not the strength to pull it out. The fish kept the upper hand and pulled the dwarf towards him. He held on to all the reeds and rushes, but it was of little good, for he had forced, he was forced to follow the movements of the fish and was in urgent danger of being dragged into the water. The girls came just in time and they held him fast and tried to free, free his beard from the line, but it was all in vain. The beard and the line were entangled fast together. There was nothing to do but to bring out the scissors and cut the beard, whereby a small part of it was lost. When the dwarf saw that, he screamed out, Is that civil, you toadstool, to disfigure a man's face? Was it not enough to clip off the end of my beard? Now you cut off the best part of it. I cannot let myself be seen by people. I wish you had been made to run the soles off your shoes. Then he took the sack of pearls, which lay in the rushes, and without another word, he dragged it away and disappeared behind a stone. It happened that soon afterwards, the mother sent the two children to town to buy needles, thread, and laces, and ribbons. The road led them across the hearth in which huge pieces of rock lay strewn about. There, they noticed a large bird hovering in the air, flying slowly round and round, hovering. It settled on a rock not far away, and immediately they heard a loud, piteous cry. They ran up and saw with horror that the eagle had seized their old acquaintance, the dwarf, and was going to carry him off. The children, full of pity, at once took hold of the little man and pulled against the eagle so long that at last he let the dwarf go. As soon as the dwarf had recovered from his first fright, he cried with his shrill voice, could you not have done it more quickly? You dragged my brown coat so that it's all torn and full of holes. You clumsy creatures. And then he took up a sack full of precious stones and slipped away again under the rock to his hole. The girls who by this time were used to his ingratitude went on their way and did their business in town. As they crossed the heath again and on their way home, they surprised the dwarf who had emptied out his bag of precious stones in a clean spot and had not thought that anyone would come there so late. The evening shone upon the brilliant stones and they glittered and sparkled with all the colors so brilliantly that the children stood there and stared at them. Why do you stand gaping there? cried the dwarf with his ashen gray face becoming bright copper red with rage. He was still cursing when a loud growling was heard and a black bear came trotting towards them out of the forest. The dwarf sprang up in fright, but he could not reach his cave for the bear was already close. Then in the dread of his heart, he cried, dear bear, spare me. I will give you all my treasures. Look at these beautiful jewels lying there. Grant me my life. What you want is such a slender fellow as I. You would not feel me between your teeth. Take these two wicked girls. They are tender morsels for you, as young quails. For mercy's sake, eat them. The bear took no heed of his words, but gave them the wicked creature a single blow with his paw, and he did not move again. The girls had run away, but the bear called to them. Snow White, Rose Red, do not be afraid. Wait. I will come with you. Then they recognized his voice and they waited. And when he came up to them, suddenly his bare skin fell off and there he stood, a handsome man clothed in all gold. I am a king's son, he said, and I was bewitched by that wicked dwarf who stole my treasures. I have had to run about the forest as a savage bear until I was freed by his death. Now he has got his well-deserved punishment. Not long after, Snow White was married to him 
and rose red to his brother. And they divided between them the great treasure that the dwarf had gathered together in his cave. The old mother lived peacefully and happily with her children for many years. And she took the two rose trees with her and they stood before her window and every year they bore the most beautiful roses of red and of white. The end. Thank you, my friends. Thank you for listening. And remember, just like Snow White and Rose Red, to be kind to all creatures. See you next time. <laughs>